Hey guys, it's Robert again from Australian Camping and Four Wheel Drives. So in this episode, we're going to do some uh, product reviews. Um, uh, we're especially going to be looking at the solar blanket we've provided here by Super Cheap Auto. The other day, I was contacted by Super Cheap. Uh, Reese actually contacted me from Super Cheap Auto, and uh, he uh, put me in contact with Ashley, and uh, we organised the the, um, the to get some products from Super Cheap Auto to do some reviews on. So first of all. I want to say a very big thank you to Super Cheap Auto for allowing me to, to have access to these products to actually try them out. Uh, Reese was uh, very uh, kind to actually provide us with this equipment, guys. Um, I didn't expect it and uh, it came right out of the blue and I'm really appreciative. Um, it has allowed me to continue with the channel and, and do some extra things outside what I normally do. What I really wanted to do on this channel was to review different products as well uh, when you go camping. And so a big uh, thumbs up guys to Reese um, and uh, Ashley as well for providing me with the, these, uh, these products here to actually do reviews for you guys. Um, went down to the local uh, super cheap auto store down here at Wynnum and uh, met up with a young lady there called Ashley as well. And uh, Melissa, the manager, she wasn't in at the time so I've got to go down there and say good day to those guys. Unfortunately at the time we had to head off camping last weekend. You've probably seen a couple of those episodes uh, just being uh, produced. And um, yeah, so we didn't, didn't get the opportunity to get in there and say good day, but I'm going to go in there and say good day to her and, um, and have a chat with them as well. So um, some of the things uh, I wanted to actually review are some of the 12 volt equipment, guys. Um, so I actually uh, used to work in electronics uh, a while ago, and uh, I really enjoy working with 12 volt equipment. It's a lot of fun, guys. Uh, and you can tweak things. You don't have to worry about getting electrocuted generally. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's good fun, guys. So you can muck around with it and, and there's just so many different things you can do with it. Uh, I really enjoy it, guys. Uh, some of the things we've got here for review, uh, we have the uh, 12 volt LED light kit. Now, uh, this light kit uh, comes with a lot of different accessories. It comes with a nice little carry case here as well. And uh, they've got, the, uh, they've got uh, four uh, uh, light bars in there as well, with all the cables, the connectors you should need if you're going camping. So if you're just an uh, average Joe, want to go off in your, your tent and uh, go camping or maybe you're a bit more advanced and you've got like a camper trail or something like that and you need some lights this would be the perfect thing for you guys so we're going to do a review of that um, so what I've actually organized so I'm going to actually be providing this to a friend uh, so I'm not keeping this one it's going to go off to a friend and uh, we're going to let him uh, uh, have a look at it give it a go and uh, then we get some uh, reviews from him as well and see what he reckons about it guys one thing I did to, when I was talking with Reese um, and the guys, I said to them, look, uh, one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that uh, people understand that this is going to be an honest review. Uh, so if there's anything good to say or anything bad to say, we're going to say it in the video, guys. So these reviews uh, are going to be um, tell, telling exactly what I actually think of these products as well, guys. Um, some of the other things we're going to do at review as well, we're going to be doing the uh, dual battery monitor. So uh, that's, that's a, a handle product. So that's great for the situation where you've got a dual battery set up. So you've got to, maybe you, may, you might have a start battery in the front of your vehicle and you've got another battery in the back of your vehicle. This allows you with one device to actually monitor uh, both batteries just by touching a button and you'll actually see uh, the battery level on both of them. Uh, so it's a good little idea that one guys. So we're going to do a review of that one also. Now, so this solar uh, blanket, it's a 150 watt solar blanket. And uh, already, uh, I was going to do a review on it last weekend when we were down at uh, the Drifter event. And uh, in the end, I decided not to. And there's a reason for it, guys. Um, so uh, a lot of people that go camping quite frequently would be familiar with Anderson plugs. And so when I built our camper trailer, we put Anderson plugs on it. And uh, it essentially allows us to take any, set, any extra device and plug it straight in. And uh, I noticed that this thing didn't have Anderson plugs on it, which means that if I was going to connect it to the battery, I'd have to go in and actually attach it to the alligator clips. Now, for me, um, I didn't want to do that. I want to uh, make sure we do it uh, nice and neatly and simply. Uh, so what we're going to do tonight in this episode, we're going to actually uh, put some Anderson plugs on this thing. 
And uh, I'll show you how, how we do that, it's not hard. Anybody can do this type of stuff, guys. Um, soldering iron, if you, if you never sold before, give it a go, it's not too hard, guys. Um, you can't really stuff this up too bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so we're gonna put some Anderson plugs on that, guys. And I'll show you how we hook it up in our, in our situation. Um, so uh, the other thing we, we've got here as well from Super Cheap, they'll kind us to provide us uh, some chairs here as well. So uh, these chairs, um, they're the type that fold out. They've got a little table on the side there where you can put your cups or your plates and all that type of stuff. So perfect camping chair, guys. And I was checking them out and they can hold a bit of weight. So they should be right for me as well. We should be right to hold me up also, guys. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to cut back in and we're going to have a look at this solar blanket. And, um, and hopefully over the weekend we'll get some time, we'll get this dual battery monitor set up. I know the uh, light kit, we're going to get that uh, review of that done in the next week or two. And, uh, and the last thing is down, down the bottom down here guys, we've got the uh, awning. Now the awning, when I was thinking about this, I thought what type of awning did I want? Because I've got an awning on the side of my vehicle and I've always wanted something to cover the back of it. And uh, so we've got a fridge, a pull out fridge that comes out there. And I thought, man, it'd be just great to be able to have something over this. Because, you know, if you go into the fridge and it's a hot day, the, the, all the heat escapes and you've got the heat, sorry, all the coolness escapes out of your fridge and all the heat gets onto it. And I thought it'd be great to be able to have a cover that goes over it. So normally our fridge actually slides in under a cover, but when you have it out, it's out of the cover, guys. And I thought, you know, that'd just be a really handy thing to have. Uh, so we're going to try and find a way to actually attach that to the back. Now I've actually got a special bar that goes up over the back of our vehicle and I've just got to figure out how to actually get that attached to it as well. So we're going to look into that as well guys and then we'll put, we'll put an episode up on how we actually attached it and how we actually use it there guys also. So we're looking forward to that one too guys. Alright guys, um, so we'll come back in and we'll start having a look at the solar blanket. Okay guys, so let's have a look at this solar blanket, hey? Uh, so we'll just chop this open here at the top up here first. So I haven't opened this up yet guys. Uh, it's the first time we've uh, gone into this. So what you're seeing is the first time I see it as well guys. So what do we got in here? Empty box. <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, comes in a nice little uh, bag here by the looks of it as well, hey. Um, Ridge Rider bag. Well, looks of it, and I suspect that this is actually the solar panel. Uh, we have another, I have a, another solar panel there as well, guys, and uh, that solar panel is uh, sort of similar, similar idea. It uh, sort of folds up. This one folds up really small, and uh, by the looks of it, in the front in here, yep, we have. So it's got your solar charge controller, and uh, so this uh, is a PWM charge controller. Uh, it's got all the connections down the bottom down here, which we'll get some close-ups of later on as well. Uh, and it looks like it's got a USB outlet as well, which is interesting. So if, you, if you're camping and you want to charge your uh, iPad or your iPhone, might be a good option for you there, guys. So uh, that's one thing this has got. Uh, let's have a look in here as well. Uh, so we've got an instruction manual. We'll have a look at that as well. Always important to read your instructions, isn't it? And uh, your cable. So what's this cable got on it? So it comes with uh, alligator clips on one side and it uh, looks like we've got bare wires on the other side by the looks of it. Uh, which is interesting. So uh, we'll see how that goes also. And uh, what else have we got in here? Oh, okay. That's interesting. So uh, this goes in, and it's got bare wires on the other side as well. So maybe they've actually been thinking about this because uh, I sort of got the impression by looking at the uh, the image on it that it had some sort of plugs on it, but it looks like they haven't put plugs on it, which is actually probably a good idea, guys. That means essentially that we can attach our Anderson plugs straight onto those guys, and uh, that'll be great, hey? Which means, it'll, means essentially that if we ever want to have this disconnected, we could. What I probably will do, though, I think I'll probably actually solder these together, solder this onto it as well, and uh, use this longer length of cable and uh, instead put the Anderson plug up this end as well guys. So you've got a long length of cable to actually go to where you're actually charging it from. Uh, it's probably probably one of the things I'd probably suggest for, for super cheap in the future. They're looking at something like this. Put the Anderson plug up this end guys. Uh, it's a good idea. Uh, the reason for that is because it obviously it gives the uh, user a lot, lot longer cable length for them to actually go and plug their stuff in. And, uh, and if they need to still use the alligator clips they can. So, uh, so we'll have a look at that as well. So that looks pretty cool. All right, so that just goes back into the bag, obviously. And uh, around this side, 
the Velcro opens up and uh, folds open by looks of it, guys. So let's just get this open here, guys. Put these up the other way. Yeah, it's quite large. Wow. That's, that's a bit of, bit of space, guys. A bit of real estate that one takes up. Let's see if we can flip this around for you guys. So that's the solar panel, guys. And uh, what you would uh, probably end up doing with this type of stuff is you put it on the bonnet of your vehicle. Uh, you obviously got to have this in the sunlight. And so probably the downside of a panel like this type of setup is that uh, you know you can't really just lay it down the ground very easily and have it sitting directly in the sunlight. Generally, you'll find solar panels tend to be angled, and they tend to be angled for a reason. That's because the sun tends to be off in the distance and at an angle towards the solar panel. During the middle of the day, hey, lay this flat on the ground would be perfect for it. But you know, as the day goes on, it's probably the type of thing you want to put on your bonnet of your vehicle to get some angle on, on the solar panels as well, guys. So, uh, man, this looks really good, hey? Um, quality seems pretty good. Panels look really nice. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you get a better uh, uh, impression of it over a period of time. And so what we might do again in the future, guys, is we might do some review on it and, uh, and we'll have a look and see how it goes there. One thing I am noticing here as well is it's got these tiny little, uh, little hooks on here, little loops uh, on there as well. And uh, those loops, by the looks of it, guys, you could use that to attach that. So say, for example, maybe you had uh, one of those Ridge Rider um, awnings set up. You could probably actually attach that to the side and use this as like a wall instead and have it as a charging wall and uh, do it that way. So that's another idea, guys. So it's a good thing. All right, guys, so what we're going to do, we're going to, we're going to uh, fold this up and we're going to pull out that cable and we're going to show you how you actually solder on uh, the Anderson plugs to it, guys. So we'll do that next. Okay, guys, so let's have a look at the product here so we can go a little bit more about what we're going to do. So we, we sat down, we had a closer look at it, and we understand now some of the things which we didn't realise before. So these uh, connectors, the reason they've actually got them like this, guys, is so that they can actually be attached into uh, the, um, the charge controller they've got here, the PWM charge controller. So what actually happens is you've got these two wires here which are coming from the solar panel. They've got the fuse in them over there as well, guys and you've got a red and a black wire. So they're essentially gonna attach in over here. So you're gonna attach your red and your black wire in over there. So you'll see on these things, they've got one side, they've got a positive sign. Might be a bit hard to see there, guys, but one of those has a positive sign. So your positive is your red wire, and your negative is your black wire, guys. So that's the way you're gonna attach those ones in. So once you've attached these ones into there, then you're gonna have your next uh, red and black wire. And uh, so those are the next two wires, and they're gonna go off to your battery. So these guys here were then attached to your, your 12 volt battery and uh, you'd have connected up that way. Uh, these last two plugs here uh, are generally for uh, low current products. So stuff that um, may not draw a huge current on them. Uh, I suppose you could attach a fridge, although I probably wouldn't. Um, but I, I don't tend to like using that, pl that plug myself because what I tend to prefer to do is to attach everything straight to the battery and I leave that one disconnected. Uh, some of the other really cool things on this uh, setup here as well, guys. On the um, thing here, you'll notice it's got this PV plug, so uh, light there, so that indicates when it's getting uh, charging from the solar panel. The load one there, that indicates when you've actually got something connected via those last two, two plugs there as well. And uh, it has the USB uh, socket on there as well, so you can charge your USB equipment also, guys. And uh, you might notice here it's got this little button. That little button there actually turns this thing on and off, which I thought was quite unique. Not very many of them I've seen actually have that. I thought that was a really good idea. You can actually turn this whole thing on and off by using those plugs that, that uh, switch there as well, guys. And the other thing I noticed as well is it has these four little indicator lights up the top up there. So we're gonna have a look a little bit more about that as well in a moment, and you'll see exactly uh, what they're actually used for. So uh, let's have a look in uh, the manual here for it. So um, what I wanted to actually talk a little bit about here, uh, first of all, I want to point out here is the maximum current draw that this, uh, this uh, solar panel can actually provide you. So it's a 150 watt solar panel, runs on 12 volt, uh, provides 12 volts of course. Um, but it says here, charging current can be up to a maximum of 8.57 amps. 
So that's the current that can charge it, guys. So if you wanna get some, some idea on the maximum charge rate you should see, uh, it would be 8.57 amps, okay, guys? Uh, so uh, I believe it's uh, fused, uh, it's got charge, so it has a regulator in here. The regulator is a 10 amp regulator, so that's enough for, for this solar panel. So the reason I mention that is because if you were gonna plug in extra solar panels, you wanna make sure that you're below that 10 amps. So you could actually, like for example, connect two, uh, solar panels, two of these solar panels together, but then you wouldn't be able to use this charge controller if you're plugging them both into it because it would go over. You'd be having, what, 16, 17 amps going in, and this, uh, this uh, charge controller is only rated up to 10 amps. So that's what you've got to be careful of, guys. So for, for single solar panel by itself, it's perfect. This is the, the exact uh, uh, type of charge controller you want for it as well. Some of the other things in here as well, guys. Um, they have uh, a little set of instructions. I show you briefly how you actually wire this thing up as well. So uh, these are the, the two wires going in here uh, to the first two plugs, and those ones are going off to your um, into the charge controller for charging your solar panel. The next two are for your battery, and the last two are for a load. Load is it could be lights or it could be a, a small fridge or something like that, that type of stuff. But my recommendation, I, I actually suggest in most situations, it's probably better off to connect it straight through to the battery. That way you don't have to worry about you know if you're drawing too much uh, current through uh, your charge controller. Uh, so some of the other things in here as well, guys. Uh, they've got a little uh, diagram here, shows you what all these different uh, um, things are on your charge controller. And uh, then over here, they've got this, uh, these LED lights and they actually tell you what they, uh, what they mean in different situations as well. So whether they're on or whether they're off and uh, what they actually mean. Uh, you'll see down here, for example, like when it's charging, what the different lights mean. It essentially indicates how full that battery is uh, for you as well. Uh, and when, you, when, it, when it's actually discharging, so like when you're actually using the product and it's not charging, shows you what they mean there also for you. Um, some of the other things over here as well, guys, you've got uh, the, uh, the setting option, op options. So depending on what type of battery you happen to have, whether you've got an AGM battery or a gel battery or a flooded battery, uh, you can set it up to uh, work with different, different types of batteries there as well, which is really handy, guys. So there's just some of the things inside that manual, and uh, I think they've done a real good job of that. Uh, it's, in, it's in English, guys. <laughs> uh, not too many products you get these days come in English. So hey, they did a good thing there as well. So good thing to look at. All right guys, so what we're gonna do here, I'll show you, we've got some of the things we're gonna uh, use today uh, set up here as well. So we were having a look at this and we were sitting here thinking, you know, maybe there might be some situation in the future where we might actually wanna use that charge controller. So at the moment, we've obviously got these wires and they're ready to go straight into it. And I was thinking, well, how do we actually use this and uh, allow it to be able to use this in the future if we wanted to? And so what I thought about was, uh, what we will do is we're going to cut this, this cable off here and we're going to cut this cable off just a little way down here. So essentially we're going to have these, these two guys here with wires sticking out and uh, the other two are going to be connected into our Anderson plugs. So what we can do then guys is we can remove this all together, plug together our Anderson plugs and uh, we'll have a cable going straight through and this is going to go into our uh, camper trailer. Now you might be wondering why am I bypassing this charge controller? Now, in some situation, guys, what you can actually do is you don't actually have to use a charge controller like this. Uh, some vehicles, for example, our camper trailer, has a charge controller built into it. So you've got to have a look and see whether you have a charge controller set up already or not. If you've got a charge controller, you don't need this, okay? Essentially, you're going to connect this straight into to, to the, the charge controller you've already got. All right, guys, so that's something you need to consider. Now, the other thing we're going to do as well is uh, obviously they've got alligator clips here. Now that's you know that's really handy for some people. Uh, some people may not have access to um, to be able to to, to connect this uh, to a battery straight off you know via an Anderson plug. So that's really handy for those type of people, guys. But uh, in our situation, we've got an Anderson plug on there. So we're going to cut that cable off. We're going to put two Anderson plugs there again. So the beauty of doing it this way is that we can actually chop and change things around and have it working no matter what. So say, for example, we, we do want to use their charge controller, we can, uh, because we've got the plugs there, we've still got the cables exactly the same as they were provided to us, but we have a way of actually connecting them together as well. So some of the products we're going to be using to actually get this done with, so we've got uh, four Anderson plugs here, guys. So those Anderson plugs we're going to be using to actually uh, solder up, so we'll go through some of that in a moment. You're going to need a wire stripper, 
Okay, so these are the, some of the ones that I like to use, guys. What they actually do is you put the cable in here, and when you push it down, you see it grabs hold of that cable. So you push that down, it actually grabs hold of the cable, and it pulls it apart, and it pulls the uh, the, the uh, cable off the wire as well. These ones also have inside them a little uh, cutting tool in there. So you push the wire straight through, and you push that down, and it cuts the cable there as well. So I really like using those, guys. They're really handy. Um, then we have a soldering iron. Now, there's a couple of different types of soldering irons out there on the market. Uh, you could use like a, a 12 volt uh, soldering iron. Well, I don't tend to like those ones very much, guys. Although it might be handy when you're out camping, but I actually think this is a much better idea for when you're camping, guys. Uh, this is a gas operated soldering iron. So we have like a little uh, gas cylinder here. And uh, essentially what happens is you get the gas cylinder, you put this up the end, it's got a little area up the end up there, and you plug it into it. So it plugs in and it fills up. And what you'll actually see, if I tip this down, you might be able to see it, down the bottom down there, there's uh, some liquid. So you'll see the liquid in there, and that's actually the gas that's actually inside this one. And at the end here, you pull this off, and that reveals your soldering iron in there. And the way these actually operate, essentially they've got a little uh, switch on them. You, you just flick that on and that actually that turns the, uh, the soldering iron on. These ones have some little legs here, so you can sit that down and let it heat up. Okay, guys? Uh, so we'll just turn that off for the moment because we don't need that on. Some of the other things we're going to actually use as well, we'll probably use a, a uh, multimeter. Multimeter is really handy. You can pick these up nice and cheap, guys. They're not expensive. Go down to your Super Cheap Auto store. They've got these sort of multimeters down there as well. Uh, I think I picked this up one up at J Car ages ago, probably. And uh, what they actually do, guys, is you actually flick it onto uh, voltage. You want this on DC voltage, uh, which I think we've got on there at the moment. No, it's an AC. Yep, so uh, it, you have it on DC voltage. And uh, what's actually gonna happen is we're gonna put that onto the, these med onto the cables here, and we can check voltage is going through it. The other one which is really handy on this, guys, is, is uh, continuity. So what continuity is, you'll see it up the top up there, guys, that little symbol. And uh, what continuity does is if we get both of these cables here, so we'll just grab this and I'll show you how this works. And uh, I'll see if Katie can actually get this in a shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap these two, two together and you'll see how that changes. You see that flick? So that indicates when we've joined, when, when a wire is joined together. So if we had a bit of cable or something like that and we put it on both sides, it indicates that that cable is joined together. So it's a good way of testing to see if the thing is actually joined. So if you've got a, a good soldering joint, you can actually check it with that as well, guys. And uh, these have sound on as well. You can push the button and you can get sound for it to beep. So if the, if the, if the uh, multimeter is away from you, you can hear it as well. Uh, some of the other thing we're going to use, obviously, you've got to get your solder. Uh, so you've got that down there, it's super cheap as well. You can pick up solder from them as well. We've had that for ages, that one, guys. Uh, and uh, you're also going to want uh, some heat shrink tubing. I think we picked this up off eBay, guys. Um, so we just got some uh, heat shrink tubing, different sizes here. It's got a little container full of different sizes. And you're going to want to put that over the end of your, your solder joints as well, so that nothing shorts out uh, for you as well. It's particularly useful when you've got just two wires and you join them together and you need something to cover it. So what I tend to do is I tend to put a bit of uh, uh, the heat shrink tubing over it and then put some electrical tape over it as well, just to be 100% certain that it doesn't actually fray or anything like that, guys. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to cut back in. We're going to uh, cut these uh, cables off and we're going to start soldering things up. All right, guys. Okay, guys, so this is how you actually cut your cables. So this guy, you're going to push this cable straight through here and you'll have it sitting here like so. Okay, and then we're going to push this down and it should hopefully cut through the cable for us. There we go. So that's cut our cable off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to attach an Anderson plug onto this end and an Anderson plug onto this end. We're going to bear those wires back and we'll go through and we'll do that next. Okay guys, so what we've done here is we've uh, got a little bit of solder, we've wrapped it up and we've shoved it in the end of uh, one of these plugs uh, that we're using here. And uh, what we're going to do is we've got the soldering iron going here, the flame, you see that blue tip on there? Now when you actually do this you want that blue tip to be touching the edge of the, uh, the, the part you're heating up on, okay guys? And uh, what we need to do is, the other thing you want to do is you'll see here, see how that, that plug's got a little bit of a bend in it down the bottom down there? And uh, you want to make sure that both of the bends on both these plugs are facing the same direction. So uh, yeah, so, so what we're going to do, I've, I've, I've positioned this in the right angle so that what I've got to do, I've just got to get this and push this straight down there like that, guys. So that, uh, that they're both facing the same way. It's important when you actually go to plug it into your, um, into your plug. So this is your plug here. So you'll see in one side it's got positive, that's your red wire, and black, that's your negative wire. And so you're gonna be pushing these things in over this side here. And if you've got them both facing the same way, guys, it makes it just that much easier to use, okay, guys? So um, we'll give this a go. We're gonna heat this sucker up. 
So I'm going to put this down on one side. Okay, you can come around here and see. You'll see just um, from that, from there, you'll see that the, the heat. Yeah. Actually sitting there, it's right on the edge of it, guys. And you'll see it's only starting to melt. There it goes, pops. Blows that flame out. So that's ready to go. So now we're going to get our, our cable and we're going to push that straight in, guys. So give us a moment. We'll see if we can get that in there, guys. There we go. And we'll turn off our soldering iron so we don't actually burn somebody. And we just give that a moment, guys. We let that set. That's the soldering iron making that noise, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're just letting that set. Yeah, it looks good now, guys. So now we should be able to lift that off. And uh, we'll give that a moment or two just to cool down so then we can put that in the plug and I'll show you how that works. All right, guys. Hey, guys. So uh, what we're going to do, we have our positive and we have our negative. So see here, positive and negative signs. Red is positive, black is negative. So you should be able to get those two wires. And you need to see, see how they've got little, uh, this little bend downwards? That little bend downwards has got a face down towards the bottom of this. They're going to go in there like that sort of, guys. Okay. So we'll flip this whole thing over and we'll get them in. And we're gonna try and push these in, guys. So we should hopefully see if I've done this well. Here goes one, here goes one. We'll see if we can get this other one because sometimes they're a bit, bit difficult sometimes, guys. Here we go, here we go, and they've clipped in. So see how they've clipped in there, guys? I'll just make sure that's in the whole way. So you've got to make sure they're actually uh, clipped in the whole way. There's a little ledge sitting down, a little metal, metal band. Sometimes you can get a, uh, a screwdriver or something and push it down if you need to to get a hand to get that in. And then, so that there's got our first plug done. So now we can use that in other, in other situations. So I'm going to make up a couple of those guys. Then we'll come back in once we've actually finished this and we'll show you it all done together. All right, guys. Okay, guys, we're ready to get going again. So we've, we've uh, soldered everything up. So you'll notice here on the table, uh, we have going from our Ridge Rider solar panel that comes out and goes into an Anderson plug. And then that Anderson plug then goes back into the input on our uh, charge controller, then goes out of our charge controller. So this guy adjusts the voltage down to get the right level, goes out of the charge controller into another Anderson plug. That Anderson plug then connects to our extension lead, which then goes to another Anderson plug. And uh, at the end of it, we've got the alligator clips. Now, I'll explain to you why we've done all this as well. One thing you should do, guys, is uh, you should actually check to make sure this is wired uh, the, the way it's supposed to be as well. So a good way to do that is uh, essentially just to get your multimeter. And now uh, you put your multimeter here on, uh, we, I call it a continuity test, okay? And what it does essentially is checks to make sure that the wire isn't broken. And so what I'm going to do, it doesn't matter which way you do this, guys, you can get any wire, put it whichever way you want, going to put one wire here on our uh, positive uh, one and we're going to follow that red wire all the way through so we know the, the, the other ones over here and you can hear that beep and you can see it change. So that means that's one's wired upright. Do the same thing for your black one. Same thing. So what that says to us is this is wired the way it's supposed to. It should all be, all be right to go. Okay guys? So why have I wired it up this way? Why have I unplugged everything and um, put plugs all over the place? Well, there's a couple of different reasons for it, guys. So first of all, in my situation, I don't need this charge controller. So if, if I was in a situation where I actually did need it, I could actually take that and plug it in, okay? But in our situation, we don't need that charge controller, so we'll leave that out. So that means now I can take these two plugs, plug it together, and that goes straight through the battery. Okay, now in our situation, of course, uh, it's not going straight to our battery. It's gonna go into our camper trailer, and our camper trailer has another Anderson plug on it, okay? Which actually goes to another charge controller, okay? This is gonna go straight from the solar panel in through the Anderson plug, which is gonna go into, uh, into the, the uh, camper trailer. And so in this situation, we're gonna plug this, and this is actually gonna, what we'll do tomorrow. We'll show you this, we'll plug this into the camper trailer, and we'll show you it all going, guys. So the other reason that I put a plug here, you think, well, you know, why do you need all these plugs all around the place? The other reason I put one here is because I like to use one of these little guys, okay? So if you're ever in a place where you don't have um, a way of measuring current or seeing what current's flowing into your device, I like to use one of these guys, okay? And what you essentially do is you're gonna get one end, plug it in, in here, take the other end, plug it in here, 
and you'll be able to see the voltage and the current flying into your battery. So it's a good way to make sure that everything's working correctly, guys. So a really handy way to just plug things in, make sure everything's going the way it's supposed to. Uh, so tomorrow what we're going to do, guys, we're going to go down to the uh, car. We're going to plug it in. So on my car, I actually have another Anderson plug. And so we're going to take that plug, we're going to plug it into there, and we're going to view and we'll see what current actually flows into the battery that way, guys. Okay, guys, so we've got the solar panels out here. Man, it's been a wet weekend this weekend, eh? Uh, probably not the best weekend to be out there um, recording a, a solar video, but uh, we're out here on the main road as well, and there's a bit of traffic driving past, so I hope you can hear me all right, guys. Um, so uh, we whack the solar panels out here on the car, and uh, we found a bit of time here where it's not raining, and uh, We've got the, uh, the uh, kick-ass meter here, so at least we can see this is working, guys. Uh, you, hopefully you can see here on the meter, uh, it's got, it says up here, uh, 20.62 volts is coming out there at the moment. Obviously there's no current flowing through that at the minute. Uh, so what we're going to do, guys, is uh, I'm going to get behind that camera and I'm going to show you around what we're going to, how we're going to hook this up. So uh, we put the solar panels up here and uh, the cable comes out through there and uh, we've put on our extension cable uh, down, the, down the ground down there and uh, at the end of it up here we've uh, gone and put the kick-ass meter on there for us so uh, we can see uh, you know what's actually going on and just make sure everything's working you know the way it's supposed to work we're not going to get much current today guys because uh, it's uh, just so overcast unfortunately but hey you know at least if you can see it's all working that'll be great so uh, what I did in my car is uh, up the top up here you will notice there is an Anderson plug and uh, that Anderson plug is designed so that you can plug in extra solar panels. So we actually have one up here on the roof and at the moment it's covered. So I'll just show you that as well. So just sitting just down up over there. So you see that solar panel up there guys? And uh, so yeah, so that one uh, allows us to um, you know, charge it whilst we're driving. But mind you, with that, uh, those max tracks up there, seems to block a lot of it, hey? So um, uh, what we'll do now is I'm gonna plug this in up there. So the uh, solar panel plugs, and uh, we'll show you what we get up on our meter as well. Okay, let's give this a go. Okay, so you take your plug, put that in. The next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be watching this meter here. And uh, hopefully, there it goes. So you can see that there right now, guys. So the voltage dropped down to 12 volts because uh, it's uh, going in through our charge controller. It's 12.9 volts there roughly at the moment. And we've got 1.67 amps going in. Now look, uh, these batteries are pretty much already fully charged because I do have them when I'm driving and we've been driving a fair bit guys. So I wouldn't expect a lot of current to be going in quite, on, quite honestly. And, uh, but, but that's as simple as it gets guys. You just plug it in and away you go. So I could essentially leave these things here on the front of my car. So I've got them sitting up here on the front of my car and uh, I could be charging, hey. Uh, really handy guys. And I mean, the other thing you can do as well is you could actually take um, these uh, these panels and you could put them like up on the top of a, a rooftop tent. Uh, so you know how we've got our rooftop tent down there with the awning around it. Whack it up on top of that awning, guys, and uh, do something like that as well. Um, now, I thought I'd show you these other bits as well. I'll go grab them and we'll show you the other bits as well so you know how you can hook it up. If you don't have a setup like mine, you might just have like a battery and that type of stuff and you want to hook up to that as well. So I'm going to show you that okay, next. Okay, guys, so what you'd normally do is you'd get your, your cable and the uh, beauty is you just plug it straight in here. So that's your input from your solar panel. And uh, then you grab your alligator clips. And uh, generally what you'd probably be using, you'd actually be using the longer cable, you'd have this up that end, hey. But just, just for the sake of what we're doing here today, I'll just show you this way, guys. So uh, then you get your, your uh, other plug, put that in, and then that part will then go to your battery. So uh, that's the best way of doing it, guys. Obviously, have this part closer to your solar panel. That's the best way of doing that, guys. You shouldn't have too much of a cable length running between the two. Um, but uh, just for the sake of it, I'll just show you just how you hook it up this way. And so this is your charge controller, this goes to your battery. What this guy does is it knocks it down from like 20 something volts and then knocks it down to 12 to 13 volts for you and then that then charges uh, your, your, um, your batteries that way. If you wanted to, you could also use something like the little uh, kick-ass meter as well. And you could plug that in as, as well if you wanted to. Uh, we get this in the right way, source and load. 
hook that in, put that in, and then you'd have your meter sitting there as well. So the really reason I really like these things, hey, is so you can see, you can actually see what type of current's going into your battery. Um, I mean, these are great. You, can, you get some idea that it's being charged and all that type of stuff, but you have no idea on how much charge is actually going into it. Whereas when you put your little meter on there, you can actually see, you know, you're getting one, two, eight amps. Uh, eight amps would be great. Like today is really overcast, guys. We've got no sun here at all. Uh, I've been struggling to try to get outside today to actually uh, film this because of all the wet weather. The car's soaking wet, guys. And uh, so it's just been a little bit difficult to actually film. But uh, that's all you do, guys. Um, so look, one thing I'd recommend, yeah, go and whack some Anderson plugs on it. It's a lot easier. You can chop and change things around how you want to. You don't have to be unscrewing anything and all that all the time. So all I do is just grab that cable, pop, plug it straight into the uh, side of the car there, and away we go. So give me a minute, I'll show you our charge controller so you know what I'm talking about. All right, guys, so this is the actual uh, battery setup that we've got in here. So uh, we've got one of the Australian Direct um, battery units in here. And uh, yeah, we wired this one up ourselves, guys. Um, so I'm gonna show you briefly what we've actually got over here. Just over the side, I tried to label everything. Hey, that one over there says to the solar panel. So that goes up and uh, we have this going up over here, up that, up that uh, cable up there and up there to where our solar panel is actually going. And uh, so that's the way we've wired that. That just goes in over there. And then that actually ends up connecting into our Red Arc. Uh, this is a BCDC1225 LV. So the LV stands for low voltage, guys. And uh, one thing I noticed when I was looking at the Ford Ranger was sometimes the uh, voltage can drop down low, guys, and uh, what happens is the Red Arc uh, charge controllers and them switch off. They don't actually charge the battery. And uh, so what you'll see over here, you'll see these uh, wires over there, it's a two ignition. And uh, those wires, uh, one of them is actually a little light to indicate when we're actually charging. I'll show you that inside the cab as well. And uh, the other wire, uh, that one there actually goes through to uh, the ignition. And uh, what it does is when, it, that, uh, when you actually turn the ignition on, it uh, tells the red arc that you've actually got the ignition on and uh, it always gets uh, the voltage through and then it boosts it up from there no matter what the voltage is. So say for example, you know, your voltage drops down below the minimum level that uh, these guys require, uh, you can get charged in that way as well, guys. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much what we've done. We've, put, we've got a little C-Tech unit over there. You know I'm saying like she's really overcast today, guys. So we're pretty much topped up. We're only getting 300 milliamps in there, hardly anything, guys. Uh, and then at the front of this guy, what we do in here, we have our cigarette lighter socket and uh, that then goes off to our fridge and uh, you've got your other USB ports and other um, ports over there as well and uh, your little button over here and that turns on and shows you what your voltage is of your batteries as well guys. So uh, look that's a really brief run through but uh, that just shows you just how I've done in my situation. One thing we are looking at doing uh, we're looking actually uh, taking that uh, BCDC1225 off and uh, replacing with another Red Arc controller, uh, the one that does the lithium batteries as well, guys. Because uh, what we actually have here, we've actually got another battery sitting right in behind there. And uh, so that gives us two batteries. And uh, what I think I might actually do is might actually sell this uh, BCDC1225 and uh, might sell both the batteries. They're pretty much brand new. And I'll switch it over for a lithium one so it's a little bit lighter uh, as well. Um, so that's about it, guys. Um, this obviously then goes off to our fridge. And our fridge is just sitting here. Just in behind us in here, we've got our, our, uh, our uh, ARB fridge sitting there, guys, and uh, yeah. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that episode. Um, if you enjoy it, give us a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll see you next episode.